doing the blues in Chicago and Memphis, and uh, I thought, you know, it's one thing to play music, but we got to do something about what's going on in these corporations around this company, this country. So I, I decided to become a consultant. <laughs> I just would like to intercept here. He's being funny. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, if you're going to do that character, you can't tell me, Tom Wade. It's really good. When I started doing the work with, as a consultant with organizations, I have this thing about, you know, how can people bring all of themselves to their work? So that, you know, I, one of the things I saw is like, I have my work self, I have my home self, I have my, you know, and, and there's this fragmentation. So how can we integrate this together? So that it's a more satisfying work experience and they're giving much more. There's all this sort of like energy that has nowhere to go. It's used in a lot of different ways. Sometimes there, it's just like, we want to have some fun at our event, you know, a team building, what people call it or whatever. So we'll come in and do our program and, but I think, you know, there's a lot of potential to take it a lot deeper. And so when, it, when it's done in part of, as part of the organizational work, there's a lot of information that's generated as far, I mean, just strictly sort of the data of what the songs were about, what people sang, and also in the experience of how people interacted, how they handled the, what was given to them, you know, it's like, okay, here's, you know, and I have a lot of fun with this, like, because I know they're scared. I know they're there's going to be fearful to talk about. So, our program's usually a surprise, and they introduce, so "Here's face to music," and we start playing a song. You know, we're jamming, and then we're going like, "What? What's going on here?" You know, and then I'm the MC, and I say, "Well, you have the opportunity to write and perform a song about working at your company today." Everybody, let's hear it, yeah. And it's like, whoa, I don't know, you know. So there's that, the fear factor, we call it, that comes up at first, and we have a lot of fun playing with that, you know. And, and they know that you know. <laughs> yeah, inviting them into the process, you know, like, okay, here's, you know, we have, like, a business case. Here's why we're doing it. You know, it's innovation, creativity, collaborating in a different way, reframing what themes are going on, different stuff like that. And then they have a chance to discuss what we call what's going on, you know. So it's like, what is going on at work? What are your top themes? And they have, they're working in groups at their tables. Who, they're like a band, so each table is going to write a song together. Because it's an individual fear at first, like, I don't want to do this. But it, the success of the group depends on how much they can let go of that and become part of the group experience and invest themselves in that. You know, so some groups, and it, it, it's very dependent, I think, on the culture of the organization. Like, how, how much are we risking how we're being with each other? So you're invited to speak your truth about whatever's going on and how you're feeling about it. You know, so that's a very simple invitation, but not one that people may not get very often at work. Like, you really want to hear what's going on? And that's, my emotions. Yeah, yeah. And, and how I'm feeling, really, you know. So and I think it takes a, a leader that's willing to hear that to, to bring a program like ours into it. Because, you know, it's like we're going we're gonna to air the dirty laundry a little bit, and, but at the same time, there's such a catharsis that can happen. We've had songs like people will say something in a song that was taboo, like everybody knew it, but nobody had ever said it out loud to anyone else, you know, in Not public. Singing, yeah, and they're just up there singing about, well, there was this food ingredient company and they started singing this thing called the Contaminated Cheese Powder Blues. <laughs> and it was like, I didn't think anybody knew about that, you know? <laughs> but everybody already knew. But so it was like, there's a weight off your shoulders of speaking the truth, and you don't have to like f put those filters on. And that's part of what I was saying before about bringing more of yourself to work. The bigger the, you know, we have these masks we put on for work. On, I got my consultant mask. I got my musician guy mask and part of it's just to to step into and, and be a certain way it's all part of my true self but when the mask is is holding back from who you really are and you have to like play at something that takes more energy and it's taking energy away from you to producing the result that you're there for 
if I have values in my life that my company is aligned with and they're producing something, that starts to get exciting. There's a charge there. They, get, they sort of discharge it a little bit, like when you, know, when you walk across a rug and you touch a doorknob or something, you discharge that static. And then it's like they go to like the vision of what they want to create. It's almost like I've seen it happen so many times. It, it must be a little bit built into us as humans. I love doing the whole system transformation thing. I think it can make incredible differences for people and, and for these companies. And in that process, we use music because music has a lot of advantages to it as, as far as there's sort of like a neurological thing. Just music lights up the brain differently. You know, and especially when people are in our two or three day conference and there's speakers and there's PowerPoint things. and. It, it's it's very one mode of learning. So to get a whole experiential thing happening that includes music, it starts reframing everything that's going on and, and, and it gets integrated and processed in a whole different way. Yeah, we've had groups like after a merger or something where they're really intensely and everybody's afraid, they don't know if they're gonna have their job and this and that. There's a lot of, and they've been working really hard just on keeping things working. You know, so I did one with, with, it was a bank merger, and they had been working on this for like eight months, and th this was their first time together. They were going to have a vision of what the new company is together. And uh, there was so much built-in, unexpressed emotion, and it, the songs were intense. You know, some were like, you know, did they really say that? You know, and so, but afterwards, like, you know, we, we had the debrief and all that and the visioning the next day, but just that night, like, everybody was in the bar and it was like this hoopla, this release of energy. And they, so it was no longer like our bank and your bank, you know, it's like, okay, we're in this together. There was a whole different way of communing after that. And so, like, the next day we started doing the visions and strategies and things like that. It was a whole different way of connecting. Usually there's... There's like a deep longing that's been connected within people. Like, I've always wanted to be part of something that would do X, you know, and now I see the possibility and I'm going to co-create it with these people. And th there's, there's these creative possibilities coming out of it. So our assumption is that that can happen on a very large scale. And with, with the whole system transformation thing, it's about getting a leadership team together and, and having them define what that they're on board we want to make this transformation we're going to create this container where this can happen we're going to, and it's not about them defining what it's going to be actually it's about them opening the doors up and to co-defining it with a critical mass of people in the organization